11. It reads, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I want to use as a title to today's message, trouble is a liar. Trouble is a liar. Look at your name and say, neighbor, trouble is a liar. Now, it's amazing because we're living in a day and age where all we hear about is trouble. Trouble in the stores, trouble in the streets, trouble on our jobs, trouble in the churches, trouble in our houses. But the word of God, if it's not taught me anything, it's taught me one thing, which tells me that trouble is a liar. Now, Jesus had the right and the authority to tell us not to be troubled. If anybody has the right to tell us don't be troubled, it is the Savior, our God, and our Redeemer that made us. Now, you can't tell me not to worry when I see you get scared every time somebody sneezes. It's hard for you to tell me not to be worried. But Jesus can be around anybody to sneeze and Jesus won't be worried. Because Jesus walks on top of trouble. He knows how to cast out trouble. And he even knows how to heal trouble. Now, why was Jesus never worried when every day he walked the streets, death was following him like a kite following a little boy in the park on the stream? Why wasn't Jesus ever worried? Jesus spat this verse even though trouble was all around him and his disciples. Jesus spoke this verse in the midst of school closings, in the midst of banks running out of money. The stores were running out of food in Jesus' day, so 5,000 people were sitting at his foot, and he had to serve 5,000 with two pieces of Captain D meals and a loaf of Wonder Bread. <laughs> Jesus was never worried about the stores because he knew how to produce a miracle. He knew one thing that many, even though he knew that his own disciple, Judas, was going to betray him, he still walked with him every day and he wasn't worried. He wasn't troubled, even though he knew he had people that was going to sell him out, but Jesus still was in trouble. He knew that he would be nailed to that coronavirus cross but he still was not troubled he knew that the cross was coming but he still was not troubled Jesus knew what we too often forget is that trouble can't help anybody a troubled heart is like a blabber mouth that can't help anybody in a drought a troubled heart does not bring water in a blackout a troubled heart does not light a candle. In sickness, a troubled heart does not lower your blood pressure. A troubled heart doesn't help anybody. In fact, the only thing going on when you have a troubled heart is that it makes things worse than they were before when you have a troubled heart. Doctors will tell you that stress is not conducive to your healing. Anxiety is not conducive to your healing. This is why if you're about to go through surgery, if your blood pressure is too high, they will cancel the surgery because your nerves have to be cool, calm, and collected in order for them to perform anything on your body. So Jesus said, no matter what you're going through, you better learn how not to be troubled. There is nothing that faith cannot do. There is nothing that faith cannot do. In Mark 9 and 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible unto them that believe. Jesus is not telling us not to be troubled just out of some nice thing like saying, Oh, everything is going to be all right. Don't worry about it. He's telling us not to be troubled because he knows his power and he knows God's power. He's telling us not to be troubled because he knows that he can handle your trouble. 
There is a great universal truth found in this keynote verse. And that universal truth is this. You can't believe in trouble and believe in Jesus at the same time. You cannot believe in trouble and believe in the power of God at the same time. Jesus is trying to teach us to dispel every fear with the tremendous prospect of his everlasting presence. Jesus did not worry about any trouble because trouble is a bully, but trouble doesn't tell you that it pays its rent to the landlord called the Holy Ghost. And God is able to evict trouble out of your life at any time because it pays its rent to the Holy Ghost. This is why we understand that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning is because God can make trouble be cast out before the sunshine. God can make trouble be cast out before the doctor comes back into the room. You done got another report because God is over everything. Trouble may not tell you, but I'm here to tell you that you have a place in God even in the midst of trouble. That's why the word says in Psalm 9 and 9, the Lord also will be a refuge to the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Where do we run to when things are bad? We run to God. The Bible has told us that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Psalm 34 and 17 says the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them from all their troubles. The Lord is not of, to them that be of a broken heart and save as such that be of a contrite spirit. Just when you feel broken, just when you feel that you can't take another thing, God comes in to you just in the midst of your trouble. Psalm 60 verse 11, give us help from trouble for vain is the help of man. If we don't see anything today, we see that man don't know how to fix trouble. <laughs> if we don't know anything today, we know that man is not capable of being able to even heal trouble when God sends it our way. If we don't have God, who else do we have? If they telling us that don't come to the hospital, who you think they saving them beds for? You think them say they saved the beds for the people with all our EBTs? Who do you think they saving them beds for? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Who do you think that they reserving them beds for? Just in case they get sick. <laughs> Just in case they need a bed. You ain't gonna make me forsake my brothers and sisters. You're not going to make me forsake the people, my God, that called on the name of the Lord with me. Because I already know what you're up to. I done seen this little king before. But God said, I'm there with you in the midst of trouble. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. So Paul said, we troubled on every side. But guess what? We ain't even stressed about it. We ain't even worried about it. We ain't messed up about it. Because we serve a God that knows how to handle our trouble. Now, the Hebrew word for trouble is akar. Akar. In one of the meetings, it means to bring a curse now, this is deep. So trouble can mean a curse has come. So no wonder the world is afraid because the world is under a curse. Whenever you turn your back on God, that's going to bring a curse. Now, I'm going to show you one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible that I taught the church many years ago that Minister Way is one of her favorite scriptures that blows her mind when I first taught this message and when I taught this revelation. 
It's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible that gives us a reason why we shouldn't be worried about anything. Scripture that covers us and protects us to let us know that we don't got nothing to stay up at night worrying about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 26 and 2. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. The curse causeless shall not come. If God has sent a curse to us because we've been praying, then let it come. If God has sent a curse to us because we've been giving our tithes and offerings, then let it come. If God will send a curse to us because we at church giving him the praise, then let it come. If God will send a curse to us because we walk by faith and not by sight, then let it come. If God will send a curse to us because we say we're a soldier in the army of the Lord, and if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. If God will send a curse to us, then let it come. But the Bible said that a curse causeless shall not come. Just about it ain't my fault that the world turned away from God. It ain't my fault that they ain't seeking him, that they ain't praying, that they ain't praising him. That's their curse. It ain't mine. Tell somebody, that's their curse. That ain't our curse. That ain't our curse, baby. <laughs> trouble is a liar. Tell somebody, trouble is a liar. That ain't Jesus, people, church. That ain't our curse. That ain't the folks that call on the name of Jesus. That ain't the folks that plead the blood of Jesus. That ain't our curse. Because the curse causeless shall not come. The blood of Jesus is on our doorsteps. It's on our doorposts. We didn't turn our back from them. We've been coming to church. We've been coming to prayer. We've been calling on his name. That curse ain't ours. <laughs> Tell us about that ain't ours, baby. That ain't ours. <laughs> oh, God, that is not ours. God has an entire army that he uses against trouble. He has artillery that he can use against trouble. Can I close by giving you three weapons God has against trouble? I'm going to give you three weapons God has against trouble, Nala, and we done. <laughs> three weapons God has against trouble. Number one, he uses your words against trouble. Your words, Matthew 16 and 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God said, I'm going to use your own words against trouble. If you say I bind that thing, I'm going to bind it for you. If you say I bind it off my children, I'm going to bind it for you. If you say I bind it off my life, I'm going to bind it for you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to use your own words against trouble. Whatsoever you bind in heaven, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth, we loose healing. We loose deliverance. We lose breakthroughs. We lose protection. We lose covering. One of our, our church members, she's in here right now. She works on, on the front line in one of these hospital type facilities. And they were, they were telling her that she had to be there um, taking a lot of these Gentiles and non-believers, they, they temperature before she come to the door. And I knew she didn't kind of like that. So I said, I'm praying for you right now. You covered in the name of Jesus. She said, by the next day, they said, they done closed the place down. Can't nobody come in. <laughs> you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna have God's baby worried about nothing. <laughs> stressed about nothing. Because whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now, I got to confess to you. Can I confess something, y'all? I have to confess that at the beginning of the year, Brother Matthews, 
at Watch Me Night, I said that there will be twin plenty in 2020. I said there's gonna be plenty. But in 2020, I lost more money, my God, than I ever lost in my life. I said, God, I said, God, I said it's gonna be plenty in 2020. Pepto Bismol can't even help. Many, many of these people with a lot of money that lost so much money, it's mind blowing. The other day when my, something happened, I said, Bruce, man, I'm, uh, about 180 something in a day. That's just one day. I'm talking about a lot of money. I mean, well, just a lot of money. Just rolling in a day. And everybody was talking about 2020. LeBron James, some of the NBA players, they were talking about when the season had canceled. They said, man, we canceling sporting events, school, office, work, etc. What needs to be canceled is 2020, is what they said, LeBron James. He's... He said, D-A-M, rough three months. Then he said, God bless you, stay safe. <laughs> then Luca Donick, the superstar player for uh, Dallas, he said, 2020 is a very bad year. Stay safe, folks. Many people mad because they can't see the Memphis Tigers make the NCAA. The Tiger season be canceled. They can't see who's going to win between LeBron and Ka Ka Kawhi. Somebody just said March Madness has been candles. They say no food in the grocery stores. They say they're running out of hand sanitizer. I said, God, I spoke that 2020 is the year of the plenty. I said, God, how in the world is 2020 the year of the plenty? God said, you're going to have plenty of time to pray now. <laughs> You have plenty of time to get me to pray. You have plenty of time to study the word. I'm going to get rid of plenty of distractions. I'm going to get rid of plenty of people that don't have faith. I'm going to get rid of plenty of people that ain't sold out to me. I'm going to shut down plenty of churches that ain't calling on my name. He said, it's going to be the year of the plenty in 2020. There's going to be plenty of folks that come to the cross. There's going to be plenty of people that say, what must I do to be saved? There's going to be plenty of people. I said, God, it's a year of the plenty. I said, Lord, 2020 is the year of the plenty. He said, they got plenty of time to seek me now. I done took all the games out. I done shut down everything. They thinking about me now. I can plant some seeds in their head now. I got plenty of people praying now. I got plenty of people calling on my name. I got plenty of people wanting to worship me now. I got plenty of people wanting to repent now. I got plenty of people that want to sell out now. I got plenty. In 2020. He said 2020 is year of the planet. Hallelujah. And Tiffany and the pastor can't tell a lie. He won't let me prophesy a lie. Oh, God. We got plenty of folks that's ready to be saved now. Oh, God. We got plenty of world leaders to know they don't have no power now. We got plenty of folks that thought they was big shots staying at home now. Said to come out now. We got plenty of folks that showing their true colors now. You can see easily between the real and the fake now. We got plenty of fake folks coming out the closet now. <laughs> they ain't calling on the name of Jesus. They running to hear what the CDC got to say. Hallelujah. But I can tell you what the CDC really means. Christ delivers his children. That's my CDC. Christ delivers his children. Uh-huh. So you have to learn how to speak things that are not as though they were. Daniel 10 and 12. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. 
If your words have life, God said, I'm coming. If your words had death, God said, I ain't coming. He's going to use whatever words that come out your mouth. If you say I'm healed, I'm delivered, and I'm set free, he's going to come for your words. But not only does God use your words to defeat trouble, secondly, God uses your worship to defeat trouble. They go out song, Joshua 6 and 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the walls of Jericho come falling down. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city and every man straight before him. And they took the city. Just with their worship, they was able to tear down the walls of Jericho. We sing it almost every Sunday. Because it's based on the word of God. Your worship will move God. The walls of sickness can't stand when you give God the praise. You got to learn how to celebrate something that God is doing. You got to learn how to thank God for something. One of our awesome women of God, she's in here right now. I had to take out the Holy Ghost on her to help her overcome one of these sicknesses. She called me, I think, day before yesterday, and she said, I got congestion in my chest. I said, take some cold syrup. Take this kind of cold syrup and put this in it. Next thing you know, she said, it's working. Then she complained, she said, but well, it's speeding up my heart. Then she called back, she said, I'm running a fever. Send me a photo of the text. It's over 100 degrees. I said, take a bath, pour some peppermint oil in it. It dropped the fever. Then she complained about being wet. <laughs> then she called back and said, I can't hardly breathe through my nose. I said, take some Vicks. Then she said, it's working, but it's making me sleepy. I say, you know what? You need to shut up and celebrate something. I say, you need to shut up and celebrate something. I say, I don't have time to pamper your side effects when God is healing the main effects. Don't tell me about the side effects. When what could have killed you, God didn't heal. You got to learn how to celebrate something that God is doing. God is looking for worshipers, not complainers. You will kill yourself complaining of every symptom you have. You got to praise God in advance when you feel better a little bit. When you can move a little bit. Baby, I can walk to the bathroom. Do you know how many people can't walk to the bathroom? Do you know how many people the nurse got to come in and put some in their bed so they can use the bathroom? You got to celebrate something. Tell somebody, God's been too good to me for me not to be in his house giving him the praise. You got to celebrate something. I can't pamper your side effects. Tell somebody, I can't pamper your side effects. I can't pamper your broken nail, and I can't pamper that your brother is coming on your teeth, and I can't pamper you got some dandruff in your hair. I can't pamper everything that you're going through. You got to be a big boy sometimes. You got to be a big girl sometimes. And you just got to stop and say this wall is getting ready to come down. I'm going to praise him in advance. You got to praise him in advance. You got to praise him until the wall come down. Hallelujah. God is a healer. But he gonna let you have something. He's a healer. But even Paul said, I got a thorn in my flesh. 
You ain't gonna be able to get rid of everything. Can't nobody have it all. But you still got the press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. For many times, I've been to the doctor before, and my God, they examined you. Did your mama have high blood pressure? She got, I said, nope. Did your dad have high blood pressure? Nope. Did your mama have diabetes? She got, I said, nope. You ain't speaking what they got over me. You ain't gonna pre-diagnose me and put me on nothing too early. Why I'm so young, and you ain't gonna make, I ain't gonna make it easy for you. We gonna go home, find out what I got for myself. Tell somebody, you better find out what I got for myself. I ain't telling you what my mama had. I ain't gonna violate the hip law telling you what she had. I don't know nothing. I don't know how my daddy died. He died at 37. I don't know how he died. Don't ask me nothing. Examine this body. the part I need you to examine. Not my mother, not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, old brother doctor, standing in the need of an x-ray. Uh, you ain't gonna pre-diagnose me with nothing. Everybody in my family has something, but I got the blood of Jesus. That's what I need you to ask me about. You put me in the crazy house if I tell you everything we got in my family. <laughs> you want to lock me up on the 12th floor in St. Francis if I tell you everything we got in our family. If I tell you all the medicine my family folk take, <laughs> you would say you a miracle. <laughs> but not only does God use your words, not only does God use your worship, but lastly, God uses his will. To defeat trouble. Yes, Tell somebody, this is why we can go to sleep. Because it has to be God's will. Luke 11 and 2. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven, so on earth. If it's not the will of God that we be in trouble, how do you think tr trouble gonna come upon us? Trouble can't touch us if it's not God's will. That's why John 14 and 1, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, be also, believe also in me. Because it, if it ain't his will, Trouble can't come to our doorstep if it's not God's will. So we trust more in his will than even in the last off spray. Because when the last off spray run out, God's will is still pouring out. His will said, 3 John 1 and 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. If it were God's will that we be in trouble, he would have never rebuked in the winds and the rain when the 12 disciples were pulling over the cover in their head, thinking that the booger man was in their room, crying and calling on the name of Jesus. If it were his will for trouble to have his way, he would have never said that by my stripes ye are healed. If it were his will that we would be sick and killed and die off early, then he would have never gone to the cross to die for our sins. Because it is not his will. You can celebrate. You can rest assured. You can walk in confidence. You can walk in faith. Because nothing can happen to you without it being the will of the Father. If you believe that, somebody stand on your feet and give the Lord a victory. Hand clap of praise. Because Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins.